Hello guys, my name is Kishan and today we are going to look at views in Oracle. So basically in this video what I want to cover is first of all uh, we want a clear understanding on views like what are views and where they are used. Okay, with then the prerequisites to create a view. Then we'll have a syntax walkthrough. Then we'll discuss some advantages on the view and then I'll show a practical demonstration on the same. So first of all what is a view? Oracle states something like a view is a logical table based on one or more tables or views. But we can more simply say a view is a named and stored SQL statement. Okay, that is what view really is, uh, just a plain text SQL statement. So the very basic reason that we use views are because say suppose there is a very complicated SQL statement that you have written right now, you might require to execute the same statement in future. So instead of saving it in a notepad and then finding it every time and executing, Oracle gives a facility to create a view. So you will give a name to your complex or you know a simple whatever SQL statement. Say suppose it is a report query. Okay, you are doing some joins and all and you are getting a report. Now every day you, you are required to get the output of that query. Okay, so you create a view on that query, store it into the database. Every time you write select star from the view name, internally what Oracle does is Oracle will cite select star from your basic uh, report query and give you the output. A view will never store a data. This is a very much pretty frequently asked questions to everyone. Does view store any data? The answer is no. Only if the views are materialized views, which is a totally different concept, then the views will store a data. Otherwise, views will never store any data. It is just a named and stored SQL statement. To understand it more, say suppose, as you can see on the screen, I have a select statement like select first name, last name, and department name from employees table and departments table, where I have joined both of these tables through department ID column. Okay. So this is my SQL statement. So if I create a view on this SQL statement with the name of v underscore emp detail and store it into the database, next time when I want an output of this very query, I can write something simple as select star from v underscore emp detail and it will give me the exact output what the select statement would have given. Okay, so that is what is view. So now to create a view, what are the prerequisites? Of course, you need to have system privileges. Now to create a view in your own schema, you need to have create view privilege. To create a view in other user schema, you need to have create any view privilege. Okay, and now um, you, you must have either select, insert, update or delete any of this privilege on all the underlying tables that you are using to create a view. So if I am um, creating a view, say suppose in this, uh, uh, in this query on employees and departments, I need to have select, insert, update or delete rights on them, on both the tables, then only I can create a view. And now there is one more scenario, this is the third point, that's a prerequisite. And that's very uh, keen, I, I would prefer that it is quite uh, understood to everyone. Say suppose there's a scenario something like a user A, okay, a user A has two tables, EMP and department, and it gives a grant on these two tables to user B. Now user B creates a view, view 1 on these two departments. Now user B will be able to grant access to this view to user C only if, you know, the privileges or the access right given to user B on employee and department table of user A are given through with grant option. Okay, then only this view 1 can be queried by user C, otherwise not. You might come, you might face errors in production sometimes like, you know, the, there's not enough privilege to access the view and that would be because the view you might have given privilege to access a view from one user to another say from b to c you have given access to access the uh, view one which is based on table emp and department which are part of user user a only if user a has given the privilege to user b with grant option stating that okay you can grant access to on this table further on to some other user then only user c will be able to access the view okay so this also satisfies our statement a view is a named and stored SQL statement. Okay. 
now coming to the syntax syntax is pretty much simple we have create or replace or replace is used only when you are replacing the view when the view with the name with that name already exists in the database and you want to change it then you will be using this or replace okay uh, why not drop because you know when you do an or replace what you will do is you will just tell the oracle that we know that this view exists i just want to change the definition let all the grants and all given on the view be as it is so in that case or replaced is used otherwise it is not required and then comes force or no force option now when you give force you are telling the uh, database engine that i know might be some of the tables in my query are not present but don't i don't mind just create the view okay no force means no no only if tables are present then only create the view otherwise not okay then comes the view keyword then comes the select uh, schema name which is again optional if you are you are creating a view in a, some other user schema you may put schema name uh, dot the view name otherwise it's not required then comes the as keyword and then the subquery the subquery is a, as our simple sql statement on whatever you want to create the view that and then there is this subquery restriction clause where you might specify the view as read only or with a check option or with some constraints i'll get on to back uh, on subquery restriction clause in another video in this video i'll just uh, concentrate on creating simple views okay so once this concept is clear then we'll get into the more advanced concepts of views so now at the advantages of views why do we use this views and what is the requirement see the basic advantage is as we are saying since the beginning of the video is that you can store your sql statement so if you have written a very complicated sql statement then there is no need for you to write it every time just create it as a view store it into your database every time you need it just write select star from view name internally oracle will do select star from your view query it will put your view query and execute it okay so you can store your complicated statements the second one is hide unauthorized data access it's like i have a table employees which have some basic information and some uh, critical information uh, of the users so i uh, of the employees so i don't want all the users that are accessing the employees table to get hold of all the data so i can create a view on the employees table okay by uh, not selecting the columns which are sensitive only the uh, columns which are needed by users i'll just create a view with that columns and give access all to the users on that particular view so what i'm doing is i'm hiding users uh, i'm hiding the uh, sensitive data from the database users okay so i'm hiding the unauthorized data so this is one of the ad advantages of using the views and now the third thing is you can structure the data in a way you, in a way you want like say suppose you can rename a column and like in a view you can just uh, rename a column to something so the, the, you basically you don't need to go and do an alter table on the table itself in just the view you can change the column order the column name and all those kind of thing you can structure your data as required okay so now let's go on to some practical demonstrations and see what i'll do is let me just uh, take a <coughs> employees table this is the hr schema okay so over here i have employee id first name last name email and all of that so say suppose i don't want to show people email address phone numbers and none of this extra detail i just want employee id first name and last name then my view can be something like create view now the view name okay and that is emp as now my select statement so say employee id first name last name okay from employees table now let's say we will not access anyone <coughs> in department id 90 so where department id not equals to 90 so i am uh, i am accessing only few columns and not accessing some sensitive rows okay like 90s say suppose uh, higher management and you don't want them to you know be queried in this view then you can just simply create it this way okay as you can see the view is created you can check the created view under your views tab you need to refresh it if it's already open see here you have the view 
and when you go into SQL you will find the SQL st script that is create uh, through which we have created this view um, it's taking some seconds so I'll let it query here it is the SQL statement as you can see over here what Oracle did is it I didn't over here give any force option or anything but by default it took one I didn't specify any column names you know but by default it made these columns over here now what is this I'll just show you in a bit now when you will query this say select star from EMP I'm querying this view and I have all the data as you can see it's not all there are 107 rows but here I'll get less because I'm not selecting uh, with department 90 103 rows okay so this this select will be so, so a view execution would be something like select star from view name what Oracle will do is it will take your this query and put it here this is the way how Oracle engine would execute okay this is the way Oracle engine will execute our query select star from and it will put our select statement this is the way fine now let me create a view let a, a bit complex view okay I'll just join two tables fine and we'll see we'll see then how we can give aliases to it so I'll create a view say create view employee details I'll take the first name last name and department name okay so I'll join employees table and department table so select first name last name department name from employees table ah I did a typo employees I've given alias of E departments with an alias of D now I'll join both of this based on department ID great here so I'll create a view create view view name then there is the as keyword and then my select statement now say suppose instead of first name I want to write I want the column name something as F name I want instead of last name L name instead of department name DPT name so I'm just giving aliases to the column when executed as you can see the view is created now when I select star from EMP details as you can see I have my output I have my column named renamed okay so this is it this is how you can create a view now every time you want to you want first name last name and department name no need to write this query again just write select star from you name and you have your output okay now instead of giving your alas is here you can even give it over here where you are giving your column names so say first name last name okay and I'll just change this I'll make DT name so that we can come to know that the LSS are changed now as I'm changing the uh, definition of an already existing view I need to mention or replace right so create or replace view view name as this one I'll just execute it uh, it says duplicate column because I have given F name F name again it's just L name over here executed as you can see the view is created now I executed select star from you name as you can see new aliases have taken place so you can give aliases where you write the select clause you can give it also over here fine so this is basically what views are named in stored SQL statement but there is more to it as I said there is check constraints and there are more other things um, then there is read only views then can we insert an update a view can we delete data from a view yes you can what actually happens is when you insert something in a view the base table that is base tables are nothing but tables on which tables or views on which the view is created those will get updated inserted or deleted based on your action so every time can you do that no there are certain restrictions and all in fact there are many restrictions on creating a view so my our next video will cons uh, target restrictions on creating the view and then in the third video we'll look at read only views and you know with check constraint views and all also I just mentioned something called as materialized view which will store data if you want to uh, get more details on that please do check out my video on materialized view it is very informative so I guess I'll hold this video 
uh, till here and I'll create another one for you know insert update deletes and read only views and and force and no force so please do tune in to check those videos out also and please do let me know your thoughts in the comments like how was it if you need any changes and all I would love to hear from you guys um, thank you for watching this video this is Kishan signing off